Hello, Keller Williams. I'm Christy Bryant with the Best of Austin Living Team at Keller Williams Market Center One. I help train agents on DocuSign. I have shared a couple of videos. This video will go into templates. This particular video will cover templates coming in from Dot Loop. So there are specific templates that I have been using um, that I find are helpful to me. Um, and other folks might have a different opinion. These are the ones that I'm using. So if you are in DocuSign, uh, you go over here to your photo. We were in the room section. I switched over to the e-signature section. So I did that without saying anything. So let me go back in and show you what that looks like. So I am in DocuSign. I click on my photo. I click to switch to e-signature. And when I'm in the e-signature section of DocuSign, I'm going to click on Templates. So when I'm in Templates, these are the templates that I have set out that I've decided work best for me. Templates are much different in DocuSign than they are in DotLoop. I will say that. I do find that that feature is a little easier to navigate in DotLoop. However, I'm making the best of it in DocuSign. And again, I do not teach zip forms. I don't use zip forms. I have heard that the template feature in zip forms is a lot easier. However, I am uh, having high degree of success and efficiency using templates within DocuSign. So I'm going to show you what I am doing. These are the forms that I am using. Um, I am not using the one to four in the state of Texas. We have the one to four, which is the contract. I am not using that as a template because there are too many fields. Um, that need to be filled out. So I don't find that that is something that brings ease to the process for me. So the forms that I have in templates, uh, the seller disclosure of relationship with residential service provider, the buyer disclosure, the same one, seller general information and notice, the seller information about brokerage services, seller wire fraud warning, buyer information about brokerage services, buyer watch <laughs> buyer wire fraud warning, buyer general information and notice, and the buyer representation agreement. So you'll notice that many of these are the exact same thing. I just have a seller version and I have a buyer version. So going into these, the um, way that I have created it, and there's two different ways. So I'm going to show you uh, for this particular training if you had used dot loop previously. Um, that way you can just bring in those forms from dot loop, make adjustments for initials and signatures, and be on your way. I will do a separate video for training if you have never used dot loop and you um, want to create the templates directly from DocuSign. So right now I'm in the template section and I would need to create, click on new. Before I do that, I need to have the form that I'm going to use. So I'm going to shift. Um, I have a different dashboard open where I have dot loop. So uh, you need to go into your dot loop, come over to templates. Uh, I actually had created templates in dot loop previously. So if you haven't created templates in dot loop, this is not going to work that great for you. So you might want to use the um, other version where I'm going to show how to create the templates from DocuSign uh, forms. However, I'm going to click on buyer representation. These were templates that I had already created. So if I click on information about brokerage services, you'll see that my form is already filled out. It already has all my information in it. I don't want to have to put the information in again. So I'm basically going to bring this in as a PDF into DocuSign templates and just add the initial boxes in a date box. That's all that I'm going to do. So from here, I'm in dot loop right now. I went into my template. I found the template that I wanted to use. I'm going to click download. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to switch back over. Sorry for having so many different things open. Um, oops, that's not the one I want to be in. Switch over here into DocuSign templates. And I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to click on Create Template.
we are going to call this information about brokerage services. For the purpose of this training, I'm going to put today's date. Yes, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic right now. And template description, that's optional. I could do that if I wanted to. I'm going to upload it. This is going to take me to my desktop. There's my information about brokerage services I just saved. Now the important thing here for recipients, this is going to take you back into pre-tagged roles. So it's taken me a little bit of learning to figure out how to title these to where I don't have duplicate roles when I am in the envelope within a room. If that doesn't make sense right now, just let that go. I could add the set the signing order. So I encourage you to use the exact title that I'm using, buyer one. If I'm using it for buyers or if it's seller, it'd be seller one. You want actually want to type out O N E. Uh, if I have a name and if I have an email, I don't have anything other than a role right now. I could add buyer two. I could add uh, the buyer agent. However, I don't have a buying agent on the information about brokerage services. They, do, I, I would not sign that form. It's only the clients to sign it. So actually, I don't need this particular one. Um, so I'm going to click off of that. So I have my buyer one and buyer two. I could adjust what I want to. If this was the only form that I sent out, it would automatically include this. This will never be just the form that I send out. However, I, I could fill it out if I wanted to right there. And then I'm going to click on Next. This basically takes me into an envelope. And if you've seen the other video, when you're in the envelope, you can add text boxes. So if there's anything that needs to be added in here, I could add it. If I hadn't filled out my information, I could add it in here. I do need to go ahead and add initial boxes. Um, I like to have these a little smaller so they don't overlap other things. I'm going to make them pink just a little smaller. There we go. And I'm going to change to buyer two. And I'm going to click initial and make it then into this next box. I could put the initial right in the center. You can choose. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a date. I'm going to go back to buyer one because it's possible I won't have a buyer two. I'll definitely have a buyer one. And I'm going to put the date. Date signed. I'm going to put it as far over to the left as I can because if you've seen, there is actually a date, a timestamp that's included and it makes it kind of long in this field. And that's all that I need to do. I now have a template. I'm going to click Save and Close. I can see it up here. Here are the other ones down below that I've created previously, but this is the one that we created right now. Information about brokerage services, 314-2020. I am now going to go back into a room. I'm going to show you how you can form your template. So we were working with Sally Smith earlier. So I went up to my picture right here. I switched to rooms. I could either, I know this is the Sally Smith we were working with, or I can click on rooms. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and click on this room because I know it's the same one we were working in. And there should be the information filled out over here on the right side. Yes, there we go. We're good. I'm going to go into the documents. So I chose information about brokerage services in the last video from the documents page. If I'm going to use a template, I have two options. The first is that I could blend documents. I can use a document from the room and I can pull in a template once I am in the envelope. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's say that I want to choose uh, the wire fraud warning. I hadn't had them fill that out. I'm going to do the wire fraud warning at this point. I need to click on it. I need to get the document ready. This is another great document I could use as a template, but in this moment, I'm not going to use it as a template. I'm going to make sure that it's filled out right now, here and now. So the wire fraud warning, nothing is in here. Orleans Realty. This is going to be a buyer and it's going to be a buyer. I'm good. Pretty certain that I'm going to be good, that it's going to, um, I'm going to use the pre-tagged roles. So it's going to add those initial and signature boxes for me. Actually signature, not initial. So I am going to 
click on this document. So I'm going to use one document from the room and I'm going to add a template in the envelope. So here I'm going to click on DocuSign. Since I checked this, this toolbar shows up, I'm going to click on DocuSign. That takes me into the envelope. I want to have the envelope name. I'm just going to call this Sally Smith. I could add something else if I wanted to. Here's the wire fraud warning. I want to add a template. We're going to add the information about broker services. And I'm pretty certain that it is this one right here, information about broker services. I'm going to click add selected. And if I was to click on it, yes, it is. It is the information about broker services. Okay, so I want to scroll down to add recipient and I want to use the pre-tag roles. So we have buyer one and we have Sally. Now I, I am not going to have a buyer two, we're just going to use the buyer one. Um, if there was a place for me to sign, there is under the buyer agent, so I'm going to click on that. And we're good. Now, at this point, because I brought a document in from my room and I brought a document in from templates, if I had a different title on the pre-tagged roles, because you created those when you did the template, if those were different, then on this screen, I would see those multiple roles. So if I messed up on it, which I did several times when I was first creating my templates, I might have to pick multiple roles for the same buyer one. First time I did it, I put buyer in the number one instead of O and E. I figured it out. I've gone back. I've fixed things. But just know this, if you see multiples here, then you need to go ahead and choose the multiples because otherwise it's not going to have, uh, DocuSign is not going to have all those particular fields signed and initial. I'm going to click add selected. So here we go. I have my buyer one, buyer agent. I already shared with you that I'm in the habit of putting myself as the first person to receive the document. So I documents. So that way, if something needs to be fixed, I, I know about it immediately. Um, here, I'm going to move my little photo over. Uh, please DocuSign. I could be very specific. I could say the IABS and wire fraud warning. And then, as we do in our market center, please read, please read, please read, review, ask questions, and then sign. Uh, my terrible typing skills. Let's fix that. There we go. And now I'm going to send it off. That is all I have for this particular video. I'm going to show you in another video how to add a template directly from DocuSign, not from Dot Loop.